The Seattle Seahawks did not get it done in prime time. They ended up losing against the Detroit Lions 42 to 29 in what was a game of who had a better offense or who would win the offensive shootout. That is what it's like when you see the Seahawks and Lions play. Who will score on offense? Because if we saw the averages of the last three matchups prior to this game, it was 80 points per game. So you knew it was going to be a dogfight. You knew that both offenses were going to do incredible things. And that's what occurred today. The Lions, though, Jared Goff, I got to give a game ball to him. He was 18 of 18 on the day. That was phenomenal football on his side of the field when it came to getting the ball where it needed to be, wonderful plays all around. Jamison Williams had a wonderful 70-yard touchdown pass. Amon Ross St. Brown, what a phenomenal toe-tap grab in the end zone. Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, it is incredible to watch this offense play. Certainly, it's not fun as a Seahawks fan observing the offense of the Detroit Lions, but they were phenomenal. They stepped up when they needed to time and time again. And looking at the evaluation of the defense, I'm not so off put by this game. The reason why I'm not is because I just listed some incredible players and I didn't even mention Sam Laporta, but there's some incredible players on the offensive side of the field for Detroit. Now, with that being said, Seattle was out, was without three of their four starting offensive linemen. They had no Byron Murphy, no Leonard Williams, no Boy Mafe. They were down some very important and key players on defense. So I'm not so discouraged. I'm more like, yeah, of course Jared Goff went off for 18 completions, no incompletions at all. There wasn't a lot of pressure throughout the whole entire game. We see the depth of a D-line. Yeah, second stringer is all along the line. You also don't have Chenna Nuosu. I mean, he's not been injured. He's been injured the whole entire year, so we they haven't had them for some time. But to see the team on defense and how much they struggled, I'm not too surprised. I was I was expecting this. Initially coming to this game, I didn't think Seattle had enough on the D-line to win. Sadly, I picked against them in my pick them when I, I had this sleeper application on part of. I chose the Lions to win. And the reason why is they have a high-powered offense, a phenomenal offense, and they showed that on full display today. Seattle, on the offensive side of the football field, I am greatly encouraged by what Ryan Grubb is doing with this offense. DK Metcalf getting involved. Najigba Barner got his first touchdown today. He was able, There was a nice play to Noah Fant to get a first down. Grubb has done an incredible job despite the difficulties of the O-line. And I got to give credit. I got to give a game ball to the O-line of the Seahawks. They were not as awful as it could have been. I feel like they were much more composed this week, much greater protection for Geno. And just all around, I think it was a much better game on the offensive side of the football field for Seattle. And it looked like it was a well-oiled machine. It's only going to improve from here on out as Kenneth Walker gets healthy and as they continue to build experience. We're four weeks into this regime. The Seahawks are three and one. You can pump the brakes a little bit on the panic mode button. I don't think you have to look at this game and be so incredibly discouraged. You got to be encouraged that they fought till the end. And they were a couple plays away from winning this football game. I say that because the tire lock at pass interference, got to say, that was not, in my opinion, I, it was a little, okay, all right, we'll, we'll give it to you, all right? You can't, you can't beat the refs and the, the other guy, the guys on the side of the football field, too, but I did not think that was defensive pass interference. I thought that was a bogus call, and that shifted momentum. Seattle was only down 27-35, got a huge fourth down and three conversion, and it comes back. They're punting the ball away. Immediately, the Lions take it down, get a touchdown. That game looked like it was t turning to the end right there. Seattle could not really respond. They had some offensive plays, couldn't get into the end zone. It was a bit of a struggle at the end, but that was a huge momentum shift. Drastically changed the game, and it's a bummer because it was such a wonderful game up until that point. And then I don't, I don't want to play referee. Okay, I don't want to play that. I don't want to be like, hey, you know, refs are rigging games. But something that has been kind of frustrating just to see the, the, the game that sticks out to me last year and this year is, is one, the Cowboys game last year. The Seahawks played the Cowboys in prime time. Calls were going against Seattle all day long. It was just, it was like, okay. Oh, great play for Seattle. Oh, there's, the, there's the yellow flag. And 
it's a little bit tough just in that regard. Now, I'm not, like I mentioned, I'm not trying to point to refs. I just think there are some calls that were pretty questionable on the side of the field for Seattle. Also, all day long, DK was getting held on to, and he still had a great game, still had a phenomenal game. Yes, the big turn, though, was that fumble. That fumble, if you take that away from the game, you take that defensive pass and, or the offensive pass interference from Lockett, that what shouldn't have been called. You take those two elements from the game. See, I was walking out of this, this, this stadium with a 4-0 record with a very nice lead, and they've proved a lot of haters wrong. Now, I still think they are in what is a team that is good that can go to great. Do I think they're a little bit maybe far off from maybe where the Lions are? Definitely possible. I mean, let's give credit where credit is due. 42 points is a lot of points put up on a team. We saw the Seahawks face the offenses of the Denver Broncos, the Patriots, and the Miami Dolphins. They've done well against those teams. But Jared Goff had his way today. Jared Goff was able to get throws to where he wanted them. He didn't have one, incom- he didn't have one incompletion. That shows you the nature of where the defense is against a team that was in the NFC Championship. So this is this is kind of a litmus test. It kind of shows where you are as a team. And, I'm, and I shared with, a couple of weeks ago, I don't think Seattle's Super Bowl contenders by any means. I think they're building to that. I think this is going to be a great season that might turn into a divisional round or, or, or maybe the wild card round. I don't know if they're going to be a Super Bowl contender. I think they have potential. Obviously, I'm a fan, so I'm I'm always going to root for my team. But I'm also a realist. And I I think that you saw here that the Lions are a really good football team. And against really good football teams, they find ways to win. They're able to just push against the adversity. And and Seattle also did something that was so so confusing to me. The two-point conversion play was... Odd is odd. I, I don't. I still am confused as to the reasoning behind that. I wasn't sure of the the intent. I don't know if you wanted to play sweet and play cute, but you kind of set yourself back because it didn't work. And because it didn't work, you were working your way up on an uphill climb the rest of the game. I mean, you would have just been down a touchdown. There was a point in time when it was twenty seven thirty five, and. Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't really do much there if you even scored a touchdown. You gotta go for two and you failed earlier. Pressure's on. So Seattle missed a lot of opportunities in this game to I think win it. But overall, the biggest issue was was coverage. Broken down assignments numerous times, missed tackles. Dave Montgomery had a phenomenal run. Man, he he just went at Devin Witherspoon, just bam, gave him. Just, oh my gosh, I, I when I was watching, I was like, jeez, man, David Montgomery is built different. It's, it's like I said, Lions are a built different team. They're a great team, and they're well on their way to making a deep playoff run, and they're, they're I mean, they're on their way. So Seattle can learn from this game. They got the Giants next week. An opportunity to really move into a 4-1 record would be great. Facing the Niners, that would be huge. The Niners are still kind of battling to figure out their identity as a team this year. It's a little bit different, but I would say overall, it's not the worst game in the world. It didn't it didn't end up to the result that the, the the Seahawks obviously wanted. I think you you look at this game and Seattle had many opportunities, some missed, and also just just defense had a struggle. The missing of those linemen was huge. The missing of their linebacker. Safety, like they had a lot of injuries, but you can't use excuses, okay? It's next man up mentality. That's just, the, you have to reflect on how deep you are. And, and no one's second stringers is necessarily gonna be better than their first, right? Let's just, let's just be real here. But I think Seattle did a phenomenal job on offense. That's one thing I'm so encouraged by is the offense stood in there. Geno Smith is proving haters wrong time and time again that he is a great quarterback, that he has the the ability to take the team far. And I'm not even concerned about the pick at the end. Game was over. He tried to make a play. He he made a, a, a decent throw, but what a phenomenal catch by that defender. My goodness, that was uh, amazing. I mean, give credit where credit is due. It's a fun football game to watch. A really good game. I give credit to where the Lions are. They are a well-oiled machine. They are probably going to have a deep playoff run again. And it's it was it was fun to watch. I think it was also really fun to see Geno Smith ball out. I, I think he did a great job. There are certain moments where his receivers did not really pick him up. And what I mean by that is Geno throws a dart. I mean, 
it's probably hard to catch those balls sometimes. But there's a few moments, a few plays where they just missed it. And you can't miss those in the NFL. You got to get them passes. You got to catch them. You got to get your quarterbacks back. And regardless, game's over. You move on to next week. You learn from it. And I think Mike McDonald, this is a great opportunity for him to grow, to learn, to see ways to improve. And I think he has what it takes. I really believe in this coaching staff. I think this coaching staff is has done a phenomenal job, and I think they will continue to do a phenomenal job. A great game by the Lions. Great game overall by Kenneth Walker. That was fun to watch. Good to see him back. Zach Charbonnet did some good things on offense. Really, the highlights of this game is the offense. The defense, many areas to improve. You're going to not do so much. You're missing three of your starting four linemen. But at the end of the day, they didn't have enough. They didn't have enough what, what, it, what it was to, to win this football game. It looked like they did, as I mentioned throughout my, this video. I think they had opportunities, but they didn't. And that's okay because it's only one loss. You learn from it. One week at a time, they're still three and one, and they're gonna only grow. I think it's only up from here. Hopefully, Chenna comes back. Hopefully, Boy Mafe, Byron Murphy, Leonard Williams. I mean, you look at those four guys right there. Those are all game records. Those are game changers. And they didn't have them, but they have them next week. And let's see what they look like next week against the Giants.